What is up guys? Welcome back to yet another anime news bit. I'm gonna get you fully caught up on the anime news of today. We have some news around Kamikatsu. It's finally getting delayed. <laughs> MAPPA has had their big stage event and while it was a very long event with very few news bits in it, there's some stuff in there. Side Games is unfortunately facing a lawsuit. We have some copyright crackdowns happening in Japan itself. Shakugan no Shana is back after 11 years with a new volume. And Bochi the Rock is getting a compilation film. But I'm gonna get into that and so much more in this anime news bit, so let's jump right into it. For our first bit of news, the official website for Liar Liar has revealed its premiere date finally, which is gonna be July 8th, so look forward to that. I'm kind of mixed on it, but we'll see. Jumping into the MAPPA stage event, they revealed some more information on Mario Kata's Alice and Teresa's Illusionary Factory. They released a teaser trailer, new visual, and a September 15th premiere for the film. This film centers on third year middle school student Masamune, who lives in a town where time has stopped because a sudden explosion at a steelwork factory has sealed off all exits to the town. In order to hopefully one day return to normal, the residents of the town are forbidden from changing, and they live out their gloomy everyday lives. Masamune's energetic classmate, Atsumi, leads him one day to the fifth blast furnace of the steelworks factory. And there they meet a girl who is wild like a wolf and who can not talk. The meeting of Masamune and the two girls upsets the balance of the world. The unstoppable love impulse of the boy and the girl who are tired of their everyday lives begins to destroy the world. Very interesting. I know when they initially showed the trailers for it, it looked really good. And I, of course, Mario Kata is, is enough to make it really, really exciting. I cannot wait for this series. Mario Kata's writing has been absolute gold and I look forward to everything she works on. The other thing revealed at MAPPA's stage show is the new anime, Buchi Guri, from the creator and director Hiroko Utsumi. It is set to premiere in January of 2024. They released a visual for it and a teaser. Honestly, gonna be brutally honest here, trailer didn't impress me too much, especially for MAPPA's side. Not that I need like spectacle visuals, but it just didn't feel like anything was happening in the trailer. It's literally just showing a bunch of people and then they show one guy eating something and I'm like, Super interesting, I don't know, unless you like a bunch of guys and eating. We'll see. I don't think they released a synopsis for it yet, but it looks like it possibly be some sort of school battler. We'll see, I don't know. Aniplex has released a trailer announcing Bochi the Rock will be getting a compilation film opening in spring. This was inevitability. <laughs> I knew this was gonna eventually happen. This is the new big thing for anime, is do a series, and if it's successful enough, do a compilation film. The hope here, obviously, is that this compilation film will mean that we're going to get a sequel, but we'll have to wait to see. A lot of times what will happen is they'll do a compilation film, and when they have the first screenings of it, when the first showings of it in theaters, they'll have, like, a bunch of people show up and they'll announce a sequel or something. So, hold your breath, don't, don't get crazy yet, but there's a possibility. Moving on, a 52-year-old man and YouTuber of Nagoya City was arrested on suspicion of violating copyright act, allegedly uploading gameplay footage of visual novels and anime. Koda organization noted in its own announcement that the arrest was the first arrest in Japan over uploads and streams of game footage. This stuff really does suck, but again, people have to keep in mind that laws for copyright is significantly different in Japan. There's no fair use argument that they can use in court. It's literally, if you're doing this, you're done, which is what I've ongoingly been frustrated with YouTube and pretty much not allowing us to have some sort of region locking on what we upload. This is why I've never really used footage or anything on my videos is because they don't recognize that. Now, I'm not saying that this is the case where he could use fair use. He's literally uploading <laughs> what they're kind of stating in the articles and stuff is that they're uploading like everything. They're uploading full footage of visual novels and stuff literally making a way that you can consume the media without actually buying the media. And that's, I, I have no argument to save this guy. <laughs> I literally don't. The only way that he could use something like a fair use argument is if he was actually narrating over the stuff and transforming it. And again, even then in Japan, this is not allowed. That's not enough to save yourself. You can't use that argument in Japan, but it's still rough. Moving on, exciting news, Katakawa announced that Medalist Manga is getting a TV anime adaptation. They released a visual for it, and Studio Maikata has drawn an illustration commemorating the announcement. Studio ENGI will be working on the series, and the synopsis for this one is Tsukasa, whose dreams were crushed, and Nori left to fend for herself. These two share a dream, and their tenacity may be the only thing that sees them through. Their destination? The ice on the world's stage. I definitely like the character designs on it, really looking forward to this series. 
I mean, it's surprising that we didn't get more of this stuff following how successful Yuri on Ice was, but we'll see if this one can definitely hit that same fandom. I haven't really heard anything on the manga itself, so I'll be curious to see how it kind of pans out. Moving on, the official website for The Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic has announced a 2024 debut and staff. The slapstick isekai fantasy with gags and battles begins when an ordinary high school student, Utsato, happens to bump into a student council president, Suzune, and classmate, Kazuki, on his way home. All three are suddenly swallowed up by a magic circle and transported to another world. The trio are summoned as heroes to save the kingdom from the Demon King's army. Here it comes. <laughs> Here it comes. The main character is going to have crappy ability, but only Suzume, <laughs> only Suzume and Kazuki have what it takes to be heroes. Please do something different, <laughs> something different, just something different. I'm joking. Utsuto just happens to be dragged along for the ride. Only the two of them have what it takes to be heroes. He's just a third wheel. At least he's being dragged along. However, things turn around when Utsuto is discovered to have a rare knowledge of a healing mage. He is abducted by a woman who identifies herself as Rose, the leader of the life-saving corpse and drafted into her ranks. So he's just gonna be a coming healer. Looking forward to that one. We'll see how that one turns out. Moving on, some sad news. Game developer Side Games has announced that Konami has filed a lawsuit in the Tokyo District Court. Konami alleges that Side Games' Uma Muzume Pretty Derby infringed on their patents, and they're seeking 4 billion yen in damages. That's roughly 28 million dollars. Apparently, Side Games has been in discussions with Konami regarding the patent rights for the game, system, and programming. But Konami did not accept Side Games' opinions, leading to the lawsuit. <laughs> Now, I haven't looked fully into this, but it's obviously indicating this is some sort of game mechanic or systems within Uma Muzume Pretty Derby that Konami is claiming that they've already patented. And it's obvious with how extremely popular this game is, Konami's going to want to cut. So that's thus the <laughs> 4 billion yen in cost. They know that this game has made a lot of money and they want a cut of it. Now, the unfortunate thing that comes with this is going to be around what exactly that means, how close that patent is, is going to be all what the court's going to have to figure out. Is this, Does this look like something that is obviously ripped off of it, or does it look similar, doesn't match the patent, and thus they didn't steal anything? But we could all say that, as per usual, Konami <laughs> is not finding any favors of the fans. I can just imagine with how much people love this property, they're probably not too happy with, with, with Konami in this whole regard. Nobody likes Konami to begin with, unless you're a pachinko player, I guess. But yeah, another, another L for Konami, as usual. But I'll actually be very curious how this turns out. Normally, I wouldn't really care so much about this stuff, but I think with how much fandom is around Pretty Derby, I'm, I'm more interested to see how this kind of pans out, because this could possibly make or break this property. But I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it. Moving on, a website was launched to announce a TV anime adaptation of My New Boss is Goofy manga. A new teaser, trailer, visual, and staff was announced. This will be produced by A1 Pictures, and the synopsis is the workplace comedy story follows 26-year-old office worker named Kintaro Momose. He recently changed jobs after his previous boss harassed him. He's worried that his new boss will do the same. Momose is trying to hide his anxious stomach when he first meets his new boss, Yusei Shirosaki. But he's surprised to find that his new boss is a natural airhead, so it eliminates all of his anxieties. <laughs> Sounds interesting. We'll, we'll see how that one turns out. I don't know if that's supposed to be a yaoi type show. We'll, we'll see. Moving on, Nippon Foundation announced that the city of Sea Folktales will begin a TV anime adaptation. They already announced that it will have 25 episodes and it will premiere in December. They already pretty much listed all the stories as a pretty much a project that focuses on sort of passing on local folktales and folklore to children. So pretty interesting idea. We'll be interested to see how that one turns out. If it's something that kind of is something that could be entertaining to those that are not in Japan, because that's typically the thing that sort of localize it, makes it very difficult to really relate to. Moving on, the official website for the TV anime adaptation of a playthrough of a certain dude's VR MMO life began streaming a new promo revealing staff in an October debut. So if you're looking forward to that one, definitely check that out. The official Twitter account for Hoboshun's manga Time Kirara revealed that the TV anime adaptation of Stardust Telepath manga will premiere in October as well. So look forward to that one. The official Twitter account for the author of As a Reincarnated Aristocrat, I'll Use My Appraisal Skill to Rise in the World light novel has announced that it will be getting a TV anime adaptation in 2024. An official website was also open to reveal a promo, staff, and visual. So 
definitely check that out if you're interested. For fans of Dropkick on My Devil, right here. <laughs> The official website for Dropkick on My Devil has announced that it will be getting a spin-off episode. It'll be titled Apocalypse Arc. It's going to premiere in winter of 2023 and be animated by Makaria, which is a different studio. They say that this is going to be separate from the crowdfunded fourth season of the anime. So definitely looking for that. More Dropkick on My Devil. I'm all for it. Katakawa and Troika have revealed more staff and information around Overtake, which is their original motorsports anime. They released a new promo for it and announced an October premiere for it. For fans of Freren, which I'm growing more into it, and I really can't wait for the anime adaptation, Shogokukon's Sunday Webery website announced that Freren Beyond Journey's End is getting five one-shot spin-off mangas. Each one is going to be focusing on different stories, from Freren making an oversized hamburger for Stark's birthday, some character stories, Freren playing Kandama, and Freren's run-in with a mimic dungeon, which I'm already getting an indication that's, a, that's an ongoing joke. <laughs> But yes, um, definitely exciting stuff. More Furin's great. Um, I'm planning on jumping into the manga once the anime airs. I'm waiting for the the actual anime to come out, but super excited for it. Just based on the first chapters I've read, it's it's already hitting. Moving on, a website was open for original anime Pon no Michi. The website revealed a teaser promo, visual staff, and a January 2024 premiere. It's going to be done by Studio OLM. And an interesting note is that quintessential quintuplets Negi Haruba is going to be working on drafting the character's designs. The anime is set in Hiroshima's prefecture, Onomichi City, where a high school student, Nashiko Japincha, was kicked out of her house. Without a place to play with her friends, she learns that the Mahjong parlor that her father used to run is now vacant. She fixes the parlor and turns it into a place where she and her friends can have fun, cook, have tea, and sometimes play Mahjong. So if you're a Mahjong fan, definitely check that out. I'm not, I'm not a really big Mahjong fan, so sometimes a lot of that stuff escapes me, so it's going to be really heavily reliant on how much I enjoy the characters. Moving on, the official Twitter account for Kurakawa's Dengeki Bunko light novel label has announced that Shakugan no Shana will be getting a new novel, which is absolutely crazy, because of course this is the first novel in 11 years. This is tentatively titled Shakugan no Shana S4. It's Roman numeral four because yes, the editor has already kind of confirmed that this is going to be the fourth in the Shakugan no Shana S short series. But either way, Really exciting stuff. Of course, I've not actually read through the light novel series, but getting more of it's fantastic. Hopefully we'll get like an OVA release of it. And finally, for our last bit of news, yes, finally it happened. The, the official website for Kamikatsu has announced that the eighth episode will be delaying by one week. They announced that it's due to various circumstances. Thanks for not using the C card. Um, but yes, they kind of note that they want to make a product that is going to be consumed by the, the actual viewers and that they'll enjoy it. So unfortunate, expected at the same time. But that is what it is. But anyhow, that's all the news I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this news bit. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what's the most interesting news bit in this news bit for you. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more and you like what you see here, I would greatly appreciate it if you consider supporting on Patreon, tips, links, super thanks, or membership button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody that does, and I'll take care.